Evaluate the following integral by first converting to polar coordinates. To get us started here, we want to start by considering this region of integration. So we're going to consider our region of integration, r in r2. And to do that, we want to think about the limits of integration here. So you can see that our inner integral is going to be with respect to y. So the bounds on y, we're going to have that y is greater than or equal to minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. And then it's less than or equal to 0. And then the bounds on x, the outer bounds here, x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 3. And so looking at the bounds on y, we can see that y its lower bound is equal to minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. And let's convert this to something more familiar. So by squaring both sides here, we are left with y squared is equal to 9 minus x squared. And bringing all the terms to one side, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And so we know this, this is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 3. And we should be careful here. We don't want to forget from this given equation, we know that we have a, a negative in front. So it's not just a circle, but it's the, the lower half of the circle. So below the x-axis. So we'll keep this in mind as we sketch our graph. We also want to be mindful of our x bounds too. From our x bounds here, we know that we're only working from 0 to 3. So this means that our graph here, if we sketch r, it's below the x axis, so only in quadrant 4. This is our region of integration from 0 to 3. And this bounding curve, this is y is equal to minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. So since we know we want to convert to polar coordinates here, we can say that therefore the bounds on r, the smallest radius, is 0, and it goes all the way to 3. So r is greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 3, and the bounds on theta, if we're working in quadrant 4, we know this is 3 pi by 2, and this radian angle is 2 pi. So theta is greater than or equal to 3 pi over 2, less than or equal to 2 pi. So we have the bounds for our polar integral, and now we want to go ahead and rewrite the integrand. We know we are given here that f of xy is equal to the natural exponential raised to the x squared plus y squared. And making a little love note to ourselves that since we know x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared and polar coordinates, our function in terms of r and theta is equal to the natural exponential raised to the r squared. And we're now officially ready to set up the double integral and polar coordinates. So let's give ourselves a little more room here. So again, we were given to start off, we had the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from minus the square root of 9 minus x squared to 0 of the natural exponential raised to the x squared plus y squared dy dx with our Cartesian double integral. And we're converting this to polar coordinates. So the outer bounds are theta, so that's 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. 
our inner integral is the radian angles. So I have 0, 2, 3. The integrand is the natural exponential raised to the r squared. And our differential here is r dr d theta. And we're ready to start evaluating. So here is our inner integral. We can take this out. So I have the integral from 0 to 3, the natural exponential raised to the r squared, r dr. And we'll need to apply u substitution here to evaluate. So I'm going to let u be r squared. So du dr is equal to 2r. And then solving for dr, we're left with du all divided by 2r equals dr. So here are our substitution values. And because we have so many variables, we want to be sure to change our bounds for simplicity. And as always, keep in mind that with this u, we have defined a function of u in terms of r. So our function u of r here is r squared. So plugging in when r is 0, we have 0 squared, which is 0. And then u of 3, we have 3 squared, which gives us 9. And so therefore, the bounds on u are from 0 to 9. And plugging this into our integral, this now becomes the integral from 0 to 9 of the natural exponential raised to the u times r multiplied by du all over 2r. And the r's cancel each other out, and we can factor out this 1 half in the front. So now I have the integral of 1 half, or 1 half times the integral, <clears throat> excuse me, from 0 to 9 of the natural exponential raised to the u du. And this is a cute general antiderivative, 1 half times the natural exponential raised to the u from 0 to 9. And evaluating, we have 1 half multiplied by the integral, or excuse me, multiplied by the natural exponential raised to the 9, minus the natural exponential raised to the 0. And anything raised to the 0, we of course know goes to 1, leaving us with the natural exponential raised to the 9 minus 1 all over 2. And then last but not least here, we're ready to evaluate the outer bounds. So we have the integral from 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi of the natural exponential raised to the 9 minus 1 divided by 2 d theta. So this is just a constant integral. So we still have the natural exponential raised to the 9 minus 1 divided by 2 theta. And we're ready now to evaluate from 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. So keeping our constant here on the outside, natural exponential raised to the 9 minus 1 divided by 2. And we're going to have 2 pi minus 3 pi over 2, which we, of course, keep in mind, we know that this 2 pi can be written as 4 pi by 2. So we are left here with the natural exponential raised to the 9 minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied. So 4 pi minus 3 pi leaves us with pi over 2 for a beautiful final answer here of pi multiplied by the natural exponential raised to the 9 minus 1 divided by 4.